Hey guys, it's Michael Lalatour, and this is The Final Whistle. Hello and welcome back to The Rugby Connection presents The Final Whistle. Now, this week's guest, you can see all the jerseys, is a first for all three. Our first Leinster player, our first Crusaders and our first Samoan. And what better way to start with the captain of Samoa, Mike Alatoa. Mike, thank you so much for coming on. How are you getting on? Hello, uh, Falaba. Thanks very much for having me on. Uh, now, can't complain at the moment. Um, just uh, here in Dublin at the moment, uh, preparing for round one this weekend. Uh, the, the season's rolled around really quickly, but uh, looking forward to another season. Should be good. Good, good. I, I can't wait either. It's, it's been far too long since we've had rugby in the Northern Hemisphere, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first, first question that we ask all our guests, nice and easy, just to get the ball rolling. What actually got you into rugby in the first place? Oh, that's an easy one. Um, my dad played rugby, um, so it's, it's been part of the family as long as, or uh, well, since I was born, really. Like, uh, well, the year I was, I was born in 90, uh, 1991, and that year my dad was playing for Samoa, so he went to the World Cup um, in 91 and played. Uh, it's, it's the it's the famous Samoan team that they that always gets referenced. They made it the quarterfinals that year, so... Um, it's been it's been a long part of um, our family, and and you know I've, I've, I picked that up at a young age. So um, it's it's because of him, yeah. That really, I just following in his footsteps. I love that, and I like how you've you've chose the right path. You went for Samoa because your brother didn't go for Samoa. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he yeah. To be fair, he he came to he like they they earmarked him from an early age, and he came through all the Australian systems and stuff. So. Um, like he played schoolboys under twenty, so he was he was always lined up to to play for Australia from a young age. But um, I went I went another way, and uh, and you know it, it turned out that I played for Samoa, and you know um, it's the best thing I ever did. You know that's I was so proud of to be able to re- represent um, my family and represent my heritage. Um, you know that that comes with a lot of pride. It's probably uh, more so than what you'd get playing for. Uh, I'd say Australia or, or any other team like that's you know that, that doesn't it wouldn't hit the same I don't think playing for those teams that, that it does for Samoa that's what, I mean doesn't matter what like decade or you look at Samoa rugby there's just a big it's just pride that oozes through the jersey when, whether it's you leading from the front or your dad back in the day or, or the famous Tulangis they all die for that jersey and I love it yeah, exactly. I mean, um, like the the Samoan culture is a very proud one, and um, you know, like when when you when you when you assemble on day one for that team, like you, you know, that's that's something that's embraced straight away. The Samoan culture, and you know, there's quite a lot of boys that um, you know weren't, weren't brought up in Samoa, so it's it's ex- it's good exposure for for us, like the the boys that are born in Australia, New Zealand, or, or wherever. It's great exposure for us to to um, experience the Samoan culture and be a part of it. And then, like you know, when you when you take the field, you you feel um, that sense of pride that um, you wouldn't you wouldn't get for any other team because like you're you're playing you're representing um, not just yourselves and and the team, but so much more. You know, like the the people back in Samoa and your and your and Samoans all over the world because there's Samoans everywhere, uh, yeah. and 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 your family, which is like. Um, such a big part of being a Samoan as well. It's like um, is your is your the family connections that you have and and um, you know what the what your family do for you to get to where you, where you need to be as well. So um, that's I know that's something that um, all all players that have played for Samoa um, uh, take with them. So yeah, no, I, I do. I love I, honestly. I do love that. I was just going to add to that a little bit. How does it feel to captain? Some more, and like, is there any added pressure as opposed to just being capped by them? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, it's 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 very proud. Um, like, I'm I'm very proud to, to have had the honor to do it. Um, um, there, I mean, there is added pressure with that. Like, um, not just, I mean, on field, there's there's so many different um, decisions that you have to make, and and like, you know, like at the right time, and like. Get, have a feel for how the ref is refereeing the game, and and um, 
you know, whether to, to take the corner or take points and stuff like that. So, I mean, I mean, that's, that's, every, that's something that, that every captain would have to deal with. But um, on top of that, like, um, like in Samoan culture, like if you, if you have a title, like say if you're the coach or the manager or, or the captain in my instance, like the, it comes with like prestige and, and, and it's held in high regard. So um, there is a pretty, there, there is a bit of pressure that comes with that on, from an off field perspective as well. Um, like having to live up to that. And like, you know, there's, there's been great captains and great um, like leaders of Samoa in the past. And, um, you know, just like, like my actions, like I, all I want to do is just uh, do what's best for the team. So uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's my philosophy anyway. And like, if I'm doing that, then it, whether I'm the captain or not, then it, that's what, what's best for the team is, is what's best in my opinion anyway. Um, but Sorry to to go back to your question. Yeah, the pressure it, it's there, and um, but to be fair, like the management's been great. Like um, say La was such was such a good coach, and like having played not long ago for for Sabo himself, like he he understands what it's like to wear the jersey, and but the pressure that the boys are on uh, are under as well. So he has a great understanding of that, and so he's he's mitigating that as much as he can for us too. So he's made he made my job and all the players' jobs a lot easier too. Oh, even better than if it, if your job gets easier, then we're all happier. And it obviously, yeah. it is working because it's been a bit of a while. But congratulations on winning the Pacific Nations title this year. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, but that that itself that in itself was yeah such an amazing uh, achievement. Like um, I think the last time we won PNC was in two thousand and fourteen. So it's like. Wow. Eight, eight years ago, yeah. So it's it's been a long time, and even then they, uh, even then when they won it last time, it was it was combined with Japan. So um, they didn't win it by themselves, um, and that was the last time Samoa beat Fiji and Fiji too. So I mean, there's I mean, there's a lot to be proud of, like from from what we did um, in that in that PC campaign, like and and if I'm being honest, like. Um, I don't think we played our best rugby as well. Like I, I still think that there's still a lot of growth left in Manusawa, like the, um, like in in terms of the way we want to actually play the game. But um, like you know, to to come from behind, like in three of the games and and to win them, like the, the um, Samoan teams in the past wouldn't have done that. So it's it's something to be proud of, and I'm so proud of of what we achieved and and. Um, you know the pride that the boys played with to be able to to stick at it and and you know and now those crucial moments you know like when it would have been easy just to to let the game go so yeah um, so, yeah there's a lot to be proud of there I love it and like you said like coming back so hard like we discussed it on the show when it was going on what what a comeback and to win it and obviously we don't get to see Samoa in action as much as we like we all love watching like Samoan flair and and the heart and the, the passion that you give, but just because of like games, we don't get to see many, so we we cannot wait till the World Cup, basically. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can't wait either, and and like, you know, I'm, I'm sure the boys in November that that play in November will be looking forward to those games too, because like uh, from from my experience anyway, the the more time, the more games that we have, and the more time that we spend together, we just get better and better. So. Um, like I'm hoping for the for the squad that plays in November, like um, they just keep building from from where uh, the PNC squad um, started, and we won't have to to start again. And that's always that's always been the biggest challenge for for Samoa is that like there's such a wide um, player pool, like the, you're picking players from all over the world, and and the, the squad's constantly changing. So and then like um, most of the time you're assembling. The, the Monday of a test, of a test match, so there's not much time to to implement all the new stuff that you need to to get through or to to learn the game plan. So um, the, the, it's it's a good thing that the PNC squads laid laid a foundation now. So I mean, whoever plays in November will hopefully just pick pick up the ball and and, and take it forward. Yeah, fingers crossed, and hopefully we see you in the mix as well. That's oh, I'd love to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd love to be. Yeah, I'll, I'm always. I'm always, um, I'll, I'll always put my hand up to play for my country. So it's just, yeah, it's up to, uh, but that's obviously up to the coaches, but I'd love to be there again. 
there's, there's no reason. Looking at your resume alone, there's no reason why you shouldn't be in that squad. I mean, you've won five Super Rugby titles with the yeah. Crusaders. Yeah. That's yeah. Do you get bored of winning? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we had a yeah. I, I wouldn't say they're bored of it. Um, like, I, it would be nice to win over here where I am now. Like, uh, we felt we felt short last year, so. There's a lot. There's a lot to play for this season for for Leinster, anyway. I mean, that's fair. And you did pick a very successful team as well. Just draws me into that. What actually made you like go f- towards Leinster? Because I'm guessing a lot of clubs were interested in getting you. Oh, it just. I mean, it just seemed like the best fit for me, and and um, and like I, I still felt like I had a lot of growth left in my game and. And like I didn't want to go to, I didn't want to go somewhere where um, they were just going to take me for for what I am now, and 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 have to play, you know, big minutes week in week out, and and not not actually develop. Um, like you know, if you look at the coaches, the coaches at Leinster, we've got um, we've always got Leo as head coach, Leo Cullen, and then and then there's Stu Lancaster, um, uh, Robert McBride, who's a great forwards coach, um, and now we've got. Um, Sean O'Brien and Andrew Goodman involved as well. Like it's it's a world class coaching coaching team and and like it's I mean if you're if you're a part of if you're if you're under them then you're you're guaranteed to get better if you if you keep working at your game. So like it's like um from a from my perspective there was nowhere better to go like from from a development point of view anyway. And um and then the other bit of it was um like coming to Ireland was it's an English speaking country as well. So it was a it was, it was an easier transition for for my family just to come here and be able to to, to communicate with uh, with the people in in the neighbourhood and in public. So um, that was, that played a part of it um, as well. No, that's, that is always a, always a bonus. Was there any other teams or or leagues that might interest you or even still interest you now? Oh, well, I mean, like. Um, as a front rower, you know, like the the thought of playing in France always comes up, you know, and mm. and um, you know, not just not just recently, but there, there have been opportunities that have come up in the past. But like uh, as I said, uh, you know, the opportunity to to come to Leinster came up, and and like not only the coaches but the the players here as well. Like you've, we've got world class players, um, like Irish, a lot of Irish internationals. Um, the best in their positions as well. So um, it just seemed like the the right place to come uh, to transition to from coming from the Crusaders. I mean, they're pretty much um, mirror images of each other, like uh, southern, southern and northern. So like yeah. it just seemed like a, an easy transition for me. Like um, the the way of, the way they play and and the way like the professionalism and and um, the caliber of player as well. So it's just. Yeah, that's uh, all of those things. Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. I love that. And I'm glad to hear that you are uh, settling in very nicely to Dublin. It's always a bonus because you yeah. do hear players that, that do move like massive amount of miles away from home and they can't seem to adjust. But I'm glad that you are and your family, of course. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, my wife, she's, I mean, she's really good at like, um, Going on Instagram and looking at things to do around Dublin, so we like we've, she's always finding something new to do or somewhere somewhere new to try and eat and, and things like that. So yeah, she's like yeah, she's re- been really good for that. So um, it's been keeping us um, entertained anyway for for the last year. So um, and then we've actually been on a few road trips around Ireland too. So it's, it's quite it's quite nice, especially in summer. Like the weather's when the weather holds out, it's, it's a lovely <laughs> place to so it, it actually is a lovely place to, to travel and stuff. So hopefully hopefully the weather will hold out a little bit longer before we do it. Yeah, that, I mean that's fair. I would recommend just coming across the ocean a little bit to Scotland because we're we're a lovely country as well. So <laughs> yeah well, I've only been I've only been to play so I haven't yeah oh we've been to Edinburgh we went to Edinburgh to visit um, my brother when he came over to play for Wallaby. So, so Edinburgh, Edinburgh, we love Edinburgh. Yeah, it's a great, yeah. great place to visit. So, yeah, we'll have to visit there again. Well, whenever whenever you're there, hit me up because that's like very close to where I am. So, 
Oh, we'll do. We'll do for sure. There you go. Um, just a little fun one, and it, I don't know if it has actually happened or not. But when you're playing for Samoa and Alan's playing for the Wallabies, and your parents are there, who does your parents support? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say. Nah, I'll just say rugby's the winner in that. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, yeah. Nah, well, with that, it, to be fair, that's happened a few times. Like we we've played against each other at Super Rugby level as well uh, a number of times, and and they actually had t-shirt. My family had t-shirts made up. Um, it was like half Crusaders, half uh, Brumbies. Like it's a they meshed together like a, an emblem, and it was quite nice like to for them to uh, to be able to do that and celebrate us as well like in, in those moments but yeah it's good fun that's fair I'm, I will get Alan on the show and I will ha- ask him the same question just to see if it, if it balances out or will he no, say I, I'm, I know what he'll say yeah he's, 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 the cheek, he's a, yeah, he's the cheeky little brother so he'll <laughs> he'll say that, that uh, yeah, he'll, have, he'll say that the family has his back ah fair enough fair enough um, just another one just on Alan just quickly just because again it's a little bit of fun and it is very recent yeah. Obviously, you're at Leinster now, and they do have the Sharks in the URC. Are you going to get some revenge on Eben? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he he actually um, because that's not their first run in. To be fair, they've they've had a right. they had a run in so when when Alan first um, when he first debuted for Wallabies his first year. They had a run in in that year. It was, it was a similar one as well. Like they were. They were like head on head and, and everything. And um, I remember playing um, against the, the Stormers the year after for Crusaders. Um, and Evan, he's, he's asking me, oh, do you have a brother in um, in Australia? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's my brother. Like, he knew exactly who I was because of what uh, my brother did to him that year previous. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know about uh, trying to get him back. Like my, my brother's... Hey, Alan's he's a bit he's a bit more of a hothead than I am, so uh, I, I try I try to keep my cool a bit more uh, than than he does. So um, yeah, maybe it'll, it'll, it'll depend if he if he tries to do anything uh, to me first. <laughs> so just if and doubt, bring Big Brother Mike in. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I just I just I knew I had to ask it as soon as I seen the clip, and, and as soon as you agreed to come on, I was like. I need to ask him just for yeah, yeah. I actually haven't had a proper conversation to him about um, how that happened or or what he said. Like, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure Alan said something to him first for him to react like that. So, yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to know what what he actually said to him. It's quite funny because one of our uh, previous guests was Ben O'Keefe, and he was obviously in the middle of it all. And I'm like, I had to message him, and I was like, Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, what happened? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh. Gone. It, was, it was hectic. I was like, no, I've I seen it. It definitely didn't look the easiest job to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I'll, I'll have to ask him next time I talk to him about it. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. Obviously, you are, you are a tight head. What is your dream front row partner? So who's your loose head? Who's your hooker? And you can pick one each from both wow. past and present. Man, that's a hard... That's a hard one. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, as, from from a loose head perspective, I can't really look past Joe Moody. Um, he's, I mean, he's the best that I like. Even now, he's the best that I've ever scrummed against, and like he's the best I've scrummed with. Like. Um, We've had some dominant scrums when we've come together, so and a lot of it's off the back of what he does. So, um, you know, he's when he's when he's playing, he's uh, I I feel he's the best in the world um, as a as a scrummaging lucid. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah I'd back him um, like if I was if I was to, to have him next to me. Um, yeah, are we talking are we talking scrummaging or are we talking like <clears throat> just. Any anything you want. It could be even yeah. for the social aspect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't even have to have played with them either. It could just be yeah. people you admired as well. Yeah. Oh, I'd say from from, from a hooking perspective, uh, it'd be nice to play with Malcolm Marks. Um, I've played oh, 
nice. yeah, I've, yeah, I've played against him a few times uh, for, the, for, um, for Crusaders, played against the Lions, uh, yeah, and I've always thought that he's a, he's a class player, like um, maybe especially over the ball and 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 around the park. So uh, it'd be awesome to, to have the chance to play with him. Um, yeah, it's a shame. I don't know if, yeah, how that would happen. Like he'd he'd have to. Yeah, he'd have to move to 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 Ireland or something. I'd have to move to where he's playing. He's he's still in Japan, is he? He's still in I think. I don't know. I can't keep yeah. tabs on South African players half the time. Sometimes they're yeah. in France, sometimes they're in Japan, sometimes they're in South Africa. Yeah. Just I'm gonna say yeah, he's in Japan, just to be safe that I don't yeah. know who he is. Is that is that your present uh, front row partners? Yes, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, that'd be cool. So who's, yeah. your, who's your past? You get two, you got a head and a hooker from the past as well. Um, I'd say, um, for a hooker, I, uh, the, the first name that I, I can think of is Kevin Mielamu. Oh, yeah, solid. Um, I love it. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, he's. Yeah, like he was a long serving all black for for a long time and he's and he's done so much as a is because he's Samoan as well. So it's that's something he's he's um an icon like in, in Samoan rugby as well because because he is Samoan. So um someone someone definitely someone that I looked up to uh, growing up as as a young rugby player. Um and like a I I don't know if I've played against him, but I I I've definitely seen him around like in Auckland and at the games and that and He's someone that I want to meet and talk to whenever I get the chance. So, um, and him in his prime, like he's he was an unbelievable player. Like he's so fit and so strong and good, great in the set piece, and and he's he's durable as well. Like you know, yeah. for him to play, like to be starting at the 2011 World Cup and still be playing that well at the the next World Cup as well. Like like class player, and you know. I'd, if I was able to play with him, it'd be it'd be a dream come true. Yeah, yeah, so, solid, solid figure that. Who's, yeah. who's your who's your who's your host head from the past then? From the past, um, hmm. well, I can only think of one, um, and it's because my dad played with him, uh, Peter Fatialofa, Peter Fetz. He played for. He, he he was the captain at the uh, 1991 Rugby World Cup for Samoa. So, um, and you know when he's a he's a famous like he's he's very famous as the, uh, in not just in Samoan rugby circles but in all rugby circles like in New Zealand and all, all over the world. Like he's he's uh, very well known and and I, I've had him as a coach as well. <laughs> he's a, he's a he was a funny guy, like really funny guy, and and um, and like, like I enjoyed working with him as well. Um, and like he's he's done so much for Samoan rugby, and he's he's a great player. He played for the World Fifteen as well at one point, so that's, it would have been good to play with him too. Nice. I mean, you've cracked four solid, solid players to join you in that front row, and yeah. regardless of you do the the present with Joe Moody and Malcolm Marks. Or the pass of Peter Fett and Kevin Mailamu, you're just winning scrum penalties all day. You're just dominating the scrum. Yeah, this was it was hard. It's a hard one to choose because like I was yeah, I was trying to think like who would who would I prefer to have next to me in a scrum or like just generally around like so I was just trying to tick just trying to tick all the boxes there, yeah, really. No, no, you're tick, fine. Tick, you you tick, definitely ticked all the boxes, trust me on that. Yeah. Out of the out of Super Rugby and the URC, which is the more competitive for playing mm. in? Um, yeah, that's a hard one. I think with the South African teams in the URC, it's it's def, um, it, it, it is more competitive um, when you play those teams, and then the and then the traditional powerhouses in 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 Ireland, and like the Inter Pro Games, and then and then the big games. <clears throat> From the other teams, but there, <clears throat> but then there are some games where, like, <clears throat> like last year we've we've put big scores on teams, and and then and it's been like a, a bit of a walk in the park, um, really. Um, so 
It's a hard one. Um, I, I know. That's I why I like it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a good question. <laughs> um, it's a good question. Um, but, I mean, because at the Crusaders, we've been, yeah, the, when I was at the Crusaders, we were dominant for so long as well. It didn't, didn't lose much. So, no. um, yeah, but the new, the the local derbies like when you play against New Zealand teams like those games are always hard like because it has everything they're so fast like the games are so fast but then they're physical as well and like yeah. you know one minute you're defending and then next thing you turn the ball over and you're like someone's run the, the ball or like a Will Jordan's run the ball all the way to the other side of the field and and nearly scored you know so that's I mean that's how quick those games can change but um yeah, I wouldn't say it happens as much here in the URC. Like uh, a lot of the a lot of the teams here, like I, I find that Leinster, like our the way we want to play, we want to play quick. We want to play. We want to use the ball and and play an attacking style of rugby. But yeah. you know, a lot of a lot of the teams that we play against are trying to mitigate like all our threats and and slow us down. Oh, no, um, yeah. like take opportunities to to stop the game. Like take a take a knee at the line out or at the scrum and. Or like you know, go to their dry their their mall and and things like that. Um, whereas like in in Super Rugby, the teams would go toe to toe, like just attack versus attack. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah, I, that's what I found to be the biggest difference. That's is, um, <clears throat> how to <clears throat> yeah, and like for me, like it's been a good transition because I've come from from New Zealand to a team that wants to. To run the ball and and play with the ball, so it's it's been good. For, it's been good for for me to transition into that. So training's always fun, but it's just like sometimes you play the games and and it's just frustrating because you can't get into a flow because the the team you're playing is so good at, at Stop. um, just, just stopping you from from getting into the, getting into your groove and and just um, going from set piece to set piece and penalties. That sort of that sort of thing. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it because it's it, it is it's, it's effective, you know. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that's the that's the main thing. So um, yeah, I I think with the South Africans in URC now, like the um, I think I think you'll find over the years, like this, the, the URC will become more and more competitive and and um, not having them in Super Rugby is gonna it will be. It'll be tough for for the Aussies and the and the Kiwis, I think. That's interesting. I like that because usually you hear uh, Super Rugby's higher tempo, but like the Northern leagues, like the URC or the Premiership or Top Fourteen in France, are more physical. Yeah, but it, it just depends on depends yeah, on how you play on, as a team to begin with. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like, yeah, I, I I have found it more physical. Like the um. Yeah, uh, mo- for the most part, anyway. Yeah, again, it depends who you're yeah. playing. Like, if you're playing the South African teams, or if you're playing the Ulster or, or someone like that. Like, the, the, yeah, you're 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 in a lot of collisions. So, yeah, yeah. But then, I mean, you'll get a game in in Super Rugby where you have hardly any collisions. But then the next week, you're yeah, like there's yeah, like the Crusaders in the semi final. They made about two. 200 plus tackles or something to win the game. So, I mean, you can't, yeah, you can't say that's not. Yeah, it's like, it's it's like apples, yeah. Like apples and oranges, yeah. and it's just, just yeah. a pound. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to move on to a different yeah. part of the show now. We're going to get to know Mike as a person. Okay. So, nice. city break or countryside for like a nice little getaway? Um, what was the first one? So, like so, a city break or away to the countryside for a few days. Nah, countryside. Yeah, countryside. Countryside. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, well, oh, I grew up in the city of coming from Sydney, so um, yeah. So and like it wasn't until um I moved to New Zealand with um my wife that we actually had exposure to the country and and like living in New Zealand and and seeing greenery and stuff like um. Um, and and going for little holidays to country towns where that's the first time we really experienced it, so and we love it. So um, they're definitely countryside. No, that's fair. Cats or dogs? Dogs. 
Dogs for sure. Yeah. I'm still trying to find someone that says cats because dog, <laughs> dogs all day, every day. Yeah. Any like pre match superstitions? Oh, no, nah, not, nothing that, yeah, nothing really that stands out like. Nothing that like any other professional player would wouldn't do. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Nothing that ordinary anyway. That's yeah. like no, just because you do hear some stories like I have to wear these certain boxer shorts for game day. I have to have this sock with or some stupid rubbish. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I, yeah, I do wear the same uh, the same tights every game, but like it's more for comfort than than like a superstition. Yeah. Yeah, no, no that's that's fair enough. I've, yeah. Yeah. What is the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Um, um, man, uh, I don't even know what it is. Um, this, this, in Samoa, they have um, they they actually a, a delicacy that they eat in Samoa is bats. Yeah, so they'll yeah, in no. some parts of some not not all parts of some but some parts they'll they'll kill bats and and um and cook them up and eat them. Like, no, no. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, yeah. there is there will be people making jokes about what happened a few years ago because of bats. So no, yeah. don't, don't don't do that. Don't eat them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I know, I know yeah. yeah, 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 I know, yeah. Because like there's not, there's not much. I'm trying to think. There's not much meat on. I know, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And then the other thing I've tried, um, it's a Tongan, a Tongan delicacy is horse, as well. Horse meat. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's, a pongan is be really good for you. It's a lot richer than beef or something. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've only tried it once, and just the, the thought of eating horse, so I, I couldn't do more than one mouthful. But, yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, any hobbies away from rugby? Um, oh, I, I, I like playing the guitar, so... Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm an expert on it, but, like, I do I do like to play it. Um, and with my son now, like, he... He likes playing the ukulele, the ukulele as well. So I just, I pretty much just play some songs for him to to sing and dance to. So, nice. so it's a bit of fun. Yeah. How how old you are one? Uh so I have I have two. So one is the oldest is two and a half, and then um, the the little ones uh, four months. Oh, you're you're in the nice fun, but my my little boy's two and a half as well. So I know exactly what uh, you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, the terrible, terrible twos is a real thing. <laughs> that is, yes, that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, favorite pizza topping? Ooh, um, meat. Uh, I'd say meat lovers. Yeah, solid, solid. Yeah, yeah. Does pineapple belong on pizza? No. no. Yes. I don't, I don't, no. Yes. Finally, no. thank you, man. No, my my dad used to order the Hawaiian pizza, and I used to pick all the pineapples out and just throw them to the side. Like I, I it just didn't make any sense to me no, anyway. Um, thank I mean, you. Not nothing with pineapple. I like I actually like pineapple, but not not on the pizza. Though. No, that's fine. I've got another one for you, just because it has yeah. became a, a recent thing that I've learned. Do you put pineapple on a hamburger? No, I don't do that. Yeah, no. Good. Yeah, I have, yeah, I have seen that though. I, I have seen that though. I've seen it, but it's pretty much the same for the same reason. Like it does, this doesn't. Oh, like for me anyway, it doesn't make sense for it to. No, no, me and you, me and you are on the same yeah. wavelength. Yes. Yeah. Finally, somebody's agreeing with me yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, favorite post-match drink. Um, I'll say cava actually. Yeah. Have you heard oh, of Kava? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure Liam Messon told us about this. I'm sure he mentioned that. Yeah. Um, it's like a funny smell, hasn't it? 
Yeah, it, it, it tastes or well, it it tastes like you're drinking dirt water, really. Oh. Yeah. But no, it, it is quite nice once you get used to once you get past the what it what it tastes like the first time you do it. Like um it just sort of mellows you out a bit. So it's it's yeah. it is a nice drink. Yeah, like um at the Crusaders they used to uh, the, some of the boys did it after games. Just a, it's just a good way to connect. Like it's um, something that most islanders, um, like Pacific Islanders, will yeah. will drink. So yeah. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. So, what's your favourite social drink then when you're out? Ooh. Um. Oh. It, it it was it was Corona when I was in New Zealand. I haven't I haven't um, drunk that as much now. I've been trying to work on drinking Guinness. <laughs> Oh yes, that's a boy. Good boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I'm, I'm learning. I went to the get the get a storehouse uh, a few weeks ago, and they show you how to how to actually drink it properly and and you know take in the flavors. Like I was yeah. like before before I was just sipping away at it, and it just didn't didn't taste well. <laughs> you, you need yeah. You, apparently, you need to take a whole mouthful and like have it oh, all yeah. in your mouth. You swallow yeah. it. So. Yeah, so it's a lot nicer when you. It, to be fair, it is a lot nicer when you drink it like that. Yeah, my what's the one my dad told me because my dad's a big glass drinker, and now I'm starting to get that way as well, just because of mm. rugby. I don't know how. I only used to drink on rugby days, but now I just, that's now my go-to. So my dad <laughs> said it's like the obviously it depends on how big your hands are, but it's a three-finger rule. Yeah, I've heard that rule too. And then drink, and then slide it, and you could dip. Like my dad's hands are big enough, so he doesn't like three or four like slides. Yeah. But I've got little bitch hands, so it's like yeah. eight <laughs> or nine. <laughs> how, how big your hands? Yeah. Oh. Big enough. Jeez, yeah. Yeah. I know, too big. Yeah. Two. Like uh, two. Yeah. One, two, done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is your favourite film? Oof. Could be recently or of all time. Oh, so many, so many. Um, um, I'm a big, I'm a big Marvel fan. Like, uh, I love the, yes. yeah, yeah. So, like, all the Avengers, all, all the Marvel movies. I'm, I'm like, I'm up to date with all, all of that. So, like, yes. um, yeah. So, I did, I did enjoy. Um, I really enjoyed Endgame, uh, Avengers Endgame, and then and even. Uh, Oh, Spider Man! The Spider Man No Way Home. That's that was. I love that movie just because I I watched like when I was young when I was a kid yeah. I watched the Sp- Spider Man one and two with Tobey Maguire. Big big fan of that. So um, when that movie came out, I was just waiting for it. Like and yeah, and, um, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Me and Mike just became best friends. We drink Guinness, we love <laughs> rugby, love yeah. Marvel. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> It was a match we were all waiting for. No, I'm hundred yeah. percent with you on that. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite song or music genre? If you have too many songs, you like. Uh, um, I'd say my the, the genre would be like, oh, I, I like listening to everything. Like I've, um, so I normally like, or for recently, I've been I've been in charge of music, so I've been in the team so I've been so I've got a wide range of what I play and stuff but um my favorite would be definitely reggae um and like island uh, like uh, pacific island music like or Samoan music but nice. and 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 reggae but then yeah I, li- I listen to everything though like I, I like I I listen to any good songs really and like from from different genres and like different like like the nineties and the eighties and stuff like I'll listen yep. to. Like, yeah. Nice. Is yeah. there any song that you like you need to play before a game, even just to yourself on the bus or um oh, I have a playlist. Yeah. I have a playlist. It's it's a bit it's a it's a bit of a weird mix. Like I have like um some slow some slow um Sabon songs in there. But then I've also got like um some like some some rap and hip hop, like um, you know Warren G, um, Tupac and and that sort of stuff in there too. So there's yeah, like 
the the sound the slow sound one songs actually get me up as well for a game because it, oh, because slow. of what oh. yeah yeah like and as well as the other songs too like it has the same effect to me yeah yeah fair fair I have I've got different playoffs as well and it's very <laughs> varied shall we say yeah, yeah but before a game it doesn't matter when it comes on have to play a bit of, a, of Inner Sandman by Metallica. Yeah. It just goosebumps. Yeah. I don't know what it yeah. is. We just sit there. Yeah. And... No, it is a good song. It's yeah. I have it on. I have it on my playlist too. That one. Yeah. Too many sports teams run out to it. Though. Like that. I yeah. know. I know why. Because it, it gets everyone going. But it might be over. Like I now don't like the song "We Are the Champions" by Queen, because every sports team that wins any trophy uses yeah. it. And it. Yeah. It just annoys me now. So yeah, yeah. I do love Queen though, just not that song. Yeah, oh, oh, <laughs> Queen's oh, Queen's class. Yeah, I like I like that movie too. Bohemian Rhapsody is good. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, so good. Yeah. I've still not seen the Elvis movie. People are saying that's better. Nah, no. Nah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Yeah. One day. Yeah. One when Marvel slows down, I'll watch Elvis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you have any tattoos? Yes, I do. Yeah, I have two. So uh, I've got this one here. Ask. Oh, so it's, uh, so it's uh, uh, a traditional Samoan tattoo uh, yeah. called a Taulima. Um Yeah, and yeah, and then I've got one on my back too. So it's um, my my eldest son's handprints when he was six months. So it's oh, like yeah. that. And then one side has um, Samoan patterns in it, and then the other side has Indonesian patterns in it. It's my oh, wife's no. Indonesian. Oh, so, cool. yeah. It, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Ask so, yeah, cool. that's on my back. Yeah. For the Samoan tattoo, did you get it done the traditional way with the... Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And that, oh, uh, that was... that. It took two hours, I think, to... That, and that was the whole reason why I did it. It was more for... It was more for the experience than actually than, than what yeah. the tattoo actually looked like. It was more to 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 go through that uh, that pain and and to yeah to to be a part of, of the experience anyway and just to see what it felt like. Yeah, for those that don't know, and I'm going to properly butcher how I'd say it, but I'm going to do it in a brief way. It's like it's like an old wooden stick with a nail in it with ink in yeah. it and it can tap. Yeah, yeah. So you basically like that's this one stick with the with the needle in it, and then he's got the other stick, and he's just hitting it like that. Yeah. And Mike and did that for two hours. Himself. Yeah. And oh man, this is nothing like compared to what. Like, oh no! I'm no. sure you've seen the other guys. Like they have it like they'll have it like all over their the whole body. It's like yeah. when they like when you're when you're like for the ma- for the male one, like when you're when you're naked, it's like you're wearing shorts. That's what it looks like. So. Uh, that's uh, that's a chief thing, isn't it? Um, oh, it like oh, traditionally, it to... uh, like it used to be a chief thing, but now it's like become more like if you like if you can if you're strong enough to wear it and carry it the way that um, like with with pride and and yeah. pride for something more than then then you then you wear it. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I always like getting the tattoo conversation just because I've got a few tattoos and it's just a nice. Yeah, I don't know why I started that. I just I like bringing up stuff totally away yeah. from rugby to get people as a person as well. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I'm sticking yeah. with it. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to watch or binge watch on Netflix right now? Um, right now, um, uh, we I'm watching The Office at the moment. It, yeah, just yeah. the UK one or the US one. The US one, yeah, yeah. So, um, like we've well, we've we've been through a few um, series. Like um, my wife loves How I Met Your Mother, so what's that? Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love what's it till the end. Yeah, sorry, say it again. I love it right up until the like the last season, the season finale. Was yeah, just- yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I know. We, we, we yeah, I watched that with with my wife, and yeah, I think. Yeah, we're well, quite disappointed <laughs> we'll, how that ended. Like, it's like meant to be a dream. Yeah. Oh, anyway, meant yeah. to be a dream. Situation. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's a whole other conversation. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is there anything you recommend on Netflix? Just because there's always something to watch. Um, that um, I, I watched um the. Have you seen the the untold story on uh, Manti Teo? It's no. um, it's um, it's about a an NFL player. I don't I don't I don't know if he's he's playing right now. Or if he's just come off contract, but he he was like an up and coming um. Uh, prospect like uh, for college, and he was like in line to get the Heisman Trophy. And, mm-hmm. But he was he was like in this relationship where his um, his girlfriend died. But oh, I could, did, could, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. He, I know who you're on about. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah, seeing yeah. the documentary, but yeah, yeah. I, I've read stuff about like weird. Yeah, I know. Or yeah, it's um. Well, he he's um like I didn't realize before I watched it, but he's he's someone. He's he's born and raised in Hawaii, so he's but his 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 yeah. Samoan heritage, and then the guy that catfished him as well is is also Samoan. So yeah, the, the, <laughs> it was yeah, it was a bit it's a weird one. Yeah, it was a weird it was a weird one to watch, but um, no, I really enjoyed it. It's it's a good watch. So, um, oh, not just not, 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 yeah, it was a good watch because like um, yeah, the. Yeah, man, he was he was like mocked by all the American media and stuff as well, uh, and you know the, the end the the ending of it was like it was, it was about him getting like getting redemption and and like uh, being able to to get grab a hold of his life again. So it was, it was a cool story. Like it was so weird. Though. I remember reading about it, but it was like he was getting praised for like powering through the big games. Yeah, and then it came out that. It was all made up, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I know. Whatever helps yeah. you play better, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was mad. Like um, he was, or well, it, it sounded like he was actually in love with this this made up person, and and it it, it gave him fuel to be able to perform and stuff. <laughs> it, was, it was it was mad. Yeah. So it's, there's there's some weird people out there. Though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sunrise or sunset? Sunset, I'll say. Um, uh, just because I've never li- or never lived on the coast where you could see the sunset. So every time you, like, if we go on holiday and stuff and, yeah. and see one, it's 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 really nice. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Work hard or play hard. Work hard. Yeah, work hard. Yeah, big big believer in that. Like, um, what what you get out is what you put in. So, like, um, well, especially for for what I do anyway. Like, I I have to know that I've like ticked off everything in my prep to know that I'm going to perform on on the weekend. No, that's good. I like that. I love that mentality. Yeah. yeah. Favorite dessert. Um. Oh. It's just too many, man. <laughs> uh, I've got, I have a, yeah, I have a sweet tooth, so like, uh, chocolate. I love chocolate. Like, like um, nice. if it's in the house, if it's in the house, it's gone. Yeah. So it's just, chance if you've got it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, basically, yeah. Yeah. I just try not to buy it. Like, so I could, that's just the best way to avoid eating it. <laughs> just don't buy it. Just yeah. don't buy it. Yeah. But then, but then um, your wife might treat you. She might be like, "Look, I bought you this, and it's a chocolate." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends. Yeah, depends on what it is. Like, if it's after the game, then I'll be like, "Yeah, fine." But yeah, maybe not leading up to the game. Yeah, that's fair. Any specific kind of chocolate? Um, oh, there's um, oh, I, I like dairy milk, like the, the plain one. Like that's can't go past that. Like for me anyway. Awesome. And then um. And then there's the the New Zealand equivalent of that. It's called creamy milk, uh, or Whitaker's chocolate creamy milk. And right. It's like, and it's like the dairy milk, but like on roids. So it's just like, yeah, it's yeah, it's just so. It's like when you eat it, it's just so sweet. Um, uh, like it's it's full of flavor and and like so creamy, but like you, you just know it's not good for you when you, <laughs> by the time you are halfway yeah. through it. Yeah. Nah, that, that's fair enough. Christchurch or Dublin? Christchurch. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't even think, didn't even think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, still, still questions. Yeah, no, I, I mean, not, no, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying my time in Dublin, but like it's, no, like, having grown up in a city like this is this is a city as well, um, and and Christchurch is so much more chill than than here. Like it's it's just there's no traffic. Like it's five minutes here, ten minutes there, and like. If you're you're ten minutes out in the country, like or you're ten minutes you're up the mountain, or ten minutes you're on the beach. It's so close to everything. Whereas here, you're like it's. I mean, it's. It, I'm. I'm used to it because I've I grew up in it. But like I never knew anything. I never knew anything else before um, moving to Christchurch. So um, yeah, but I mean, it's not far. Like once you get out of Dublin, like it, it's actually. Like there's a lot of other or a lot of the other towns and cities actually remind me of New Zealand, so it's it's not Ireland itself's not that much different from there. Um, yeah, it's just being in Dublin itself is it's, being in the city. Yeah, no, that's yeah, fair. Yeah. You only got asked that because you played for more than one club. If you played yeah. for one club, it would have been a different question. It would have yeah. been like, who is a better player? You actually, bugger it, we're doing it. Who's a who's yeah. a better player? Your dad or or Alan, your brother. <laughs> 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 oh man! I mean, well, to give my dad credit, he he did score some some big like some good tries like from he used to score some some mad runaway tries like um, there's actually footage of him doing a big run for Samoa. Uh, the game might have actually been in Scotland against like a club team or something. There's like some archive footage that came up. Anyway, he did like a sixty meter run and then he offloaded it to the sky. Um, but the the thing with that is like, um, and from what, what all his teammates tell me, he's he's good for one run, and then he'll go missing for like <laughs> ten minutes, and then and then he'll do another another big hit or something, and then he'll take a breather over there. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I love that. Yeah. F- final question: One thing you'd like to be remembered for. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, it's, I sort of touched on it before around like my prep, like um, like I'd like to think that um, like the guys that play with me know that I'm I'm honest and and hardworking with my prep and and that and they know that they can trust me to do my job on on the weekend and that's that's what I want to re- remember for is to be. Um, a reliable teammate, um, and uh, you know if I'm, and then if I put my, like if I if I think about playing for Sam Ward, it's like always putting the team first, you know whatever's best for the team, and and doing doing my job to the best of my ability so that the team can move forward. So um, that's that's what I want to be remembered for, like um, um, like I. Uh, like to be fair, like I'm, like outside of rugby, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty normal person. I like I, I feel like um, like my family, we like we, I like to keep out of the spotlight and stuff. Like I'm not, I'm not really about that stuff. So um, yeah, I'm happy once once I'm finished playing, I'm happy to to ride off into the sunset and, and don't don't really mind if I'm remembered or not, like a, uh, from what I did, but like yeah. or not. Not, not in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I will add one thing for you, though, just based off this little conversation. You're very mm-hmm. humble and genuine. Mm-hmm. And oh, I'm loving, I'm loving, yeah. what I am loving. Yeah. No, thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. And the book is now closed, Mike. You've taught, you've crossed every question. Awesome. And you've made That's history, like I said at the start. You are a first, you're a first Lancer player, you're a first former Crusaders player, and you're a first Samoan player as well. So, yeah, absolute blast! Thank you so much for again to come on. No, all good, man. Um, thanks for your time, Murray. Uh, it's been good fun. Uh, I've been, I've enjoyed talking to you, and yeah, I'll have to, I have to touch base with next time we're in Scotland. We'll try and catch up. With well, I think. I think you're in Edinburgh for the UFC. I think one Leinster's away to Edinburgh, which is fine. Okay. So, yeah. 
see you the game. Don't win, no. You're not, you're not allowed that. <laughs> I, love, I love you, but you're not allowed to win. So, right, you, can win well, every, you can win every other game. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see how we go on the day. I can't really comment. On no, 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 no. Yeah. 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 But this has been the final whistle with Mike Alatoa. We will see you next time.